Dr. Sarah Hazel is Senior Science Communications Officer at Cancer UK. Sarah, what do you look for in employees? What we're really looking for with anybody who comes to work for the charity is somebody who has a really good drive and ambition to help push the charity forward in its mission to bring forward the day when all cancers are cured. So anyone with that level of drive and ambition is definitely high up on, on our agenda. They also have to have certain other attributes as well. We need people who have good time management skills, people who have good communication skills so that they can spread the word about the really excellent research that the charity is doing as well. So tell me a bit more about how you select uh, the candidates. We have a number of um, ways of recruiting people. For the graduate scheme, it's a fairly um, in-depth selection process. So there'll be an online application form that will be followed up by online testing if you're successful at, at the first hurdle. If you pass the online test, you'll then be interviewed by telephone or one to one, depending on where you are. If you're successful at that stage, then you'll be invited along to an assessment centre day where it's a fairly gruelling day of interview. So you have further interviews, you also have group activities, and then you also have to give a presentation as well. But from that selection process, we really get a good feel for all of the skills that those graduates have to offer. And that sort of selection process... Is it varies across the charity depending on the role. So we can, for example, for my role, I had to do a written test and a presentation. So they can kind of vary between roles. OK, so what's the significance of real world experience? It's absolutely invaluable. Uh, the sort of minimum requirement for the charity is a good degree that shows, you, you know, you have a, a capacity for learning and taking on board new information and, and representing that. But we also need people who know how to work in a, a, fa a really fast-paced environment. If you're working in fundraising, we need people who have fresh ideas for how to go about raising the funds that the charity desperately needs to do the research that we fund. For my position, we need you know, to be able to think laterally about science, how best to communicate that. So a number of different things there. So what sort of impact can these external activities have on, on the academic studies? I mean, people might be concerned that they weren't going to be able to put enough time in. There is a certain balancing act to, you know, balancing out your academic studies with doing extra activities that mean that, that you're in a good position for an employer to think that's the person for me for this job. So I would say take a balanced approach to it. You don't want to spend all of your time doing these skills developments, but you don't. You also don't want to spend all of your time just focusing on your studies because what will happen is you'll get a very good degree out of that, and that is great, but so will most other graduates. So you need to have extra strings to your bow to offer to your employer. So don't worry too much about um, time-wise. You can always squeeze in a couple of hours. Um, it doesn't have to be huge amounts of time, but um, doing a few extra things really makes you stand out from the crowd. And that's really important when it comes to after your studies, actually finding your way into employment. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.